In this video, I'll be reviewing a project that goes by the name of the Nodal Network. They've been building since 2017, so their development is by no means in the early phases. This is a project that has proven itself by keeping their heads down and going to work. They already received a Web3 grant, and as you can see here, they're in the Substrate Builders program as well. But what's even more impressive than that is, Nodal is already integrated in the Polkadot extension wallet and UI. Yeah, this is a very exciting project project which will be offering decentralized IoT or Internet of Things solutions that deserves your attention. So without further ado, let's break this bad boy down. The Internet of Things. Internet of Things. The Internet of Things. The Internet of Things. The Internet of Things. The Internet of Things. So what is this Internet of Things? Hi everyone. My name is Misha Benoliel. I am the co-founder and CEO at Nodal a crowdsourced connectivity solution to connect the next three things to the internet. It's the crypto lifestyle, baby! Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, my name is Francis, and on this channel, we emphasize the importance of crypto mass adoption, decentralization, and other Bitcoin-related stuff that could bank us coin. So if you want to learn more, do that by subscribing and hit the bell notification button so you don't miss anything. So what exactly is the Nodal Network? Well, they're in the IoT or Internet of Things global market, which is expected to grow and almost double within the next five years from 761 billion in 2020 to 1386 billion US dollars in the year 2026. So this is a growing industry. Collecting, sending, receiving and acting upon information or data is a huge business. As you can see here from the Nodal analytics and metrics, Nodal already has over 20 million monthly active smartphones connected to their network, experiencing a growth of roughly 38% per year, along with 25 million devices discovered per day. Oh yeah, and they have active wallets that's gone up 60x over the past year as well. But before we dissect what Nodal represents, you need to grasp the basic understanding of what the Internet of Things is. IoT technology has the capabilities to immensely change our lives in regards to how we interact with one another, especially the way we collect and send out information or making any form of data transferable and or compatible. But this mechanism is not limited to only computers, cell phones, and or human beings. We could actually connect anything you could really think of from our refrigerators all the way down to our pet dogs to the internet of things. Let me just give you guys a couple of examples with real world use cases of IoT devices. I'm going to use everyday example that you're more commonly familiar with from your home to make it a bit easier for you to comprehend. Today it's quite natural and normal for us to connect to the internet through our mobile devices or today we now refer to our mobile devices as smartphones where we can send emails, visit websites, shop online and even watch videos where most of you are probably watching this video right now from. But do you remember when your phone was not a smartphone and was not able to connect to the internet? It was just a device where, you know, you could probably call someone or someone could call you back and perhaps exchange text messages. Well, your smartphone is a perfect example and one of the first, if not the first use cases of the internet of things. However, Mr. Elon Musk, the richest man in the world, and Tesla took IoT technology to a whole new level and made the automobile not just a regular automobile anymore, it's now a software driven internet of things vehicle. Just like how your cell phone was linear and could only receive or send calls and or texts, the same is true with these Tesla cars. They aren't just capable of getting you from, you know, point A to point B by manually driving, but functions can be done remotely through the global wireless industry called the internet of things, which will allow this car to self-drive, provide data like say high definition maps and update operating system software all on its own through IoT technology. The foundation of this brilliant tech really comes down to three functions, and that begins with number one, collecting and sending information, and then number two, receiving and acting on information, and lastly, number three, doing all of the above, collecting, sending, receiving, and acting on information. If we take the simple example of say a smart kitchen, which there is a real business behind this, but smart kitchens utilizes the IoT 
fancy technology by connecting appliances. Things like stoves, kettles, sinks, etc., etc., we have a prime example of it doing all of the above. So LG, the company, has a smart fridge that can execute point number one, which is collecting and sending information to your mobile device. For example, if you accidentally left your refrigerator door open, the smart fridge will use IoT technology to send a notification or data to your phone notifying you that someone left the door open. And with smart stoves, you can execute point number two, which is receiving and acting on information. This is a digital thermometer that connects to your mobile device. It gets a calibrated temperature that reads and matches it with gourmet recommendation presets. So if you want to say automate your cooking, you know, a ribeye steak, for example, notifications can be sent to your device indicating you when to flip that steak. And nobody likes rubbery hard steak. Then we have something called Happy Fork. This example can execute point number three, which is collecting, sending, receiving, and acting on information. Believe it or not, for whatever it's worth, Happy Fork is the smart fork you need if you're trying to keep the tabs on your food intake. The utensil has sensors that will determine if you are eating and wolfing down food too fast. The fork actually vibrates and lights up, signaling you to slow down. Down. This is because proper pacing helps in weight loss and avoiding digestive problems. So it acts on its own through IoT sensors without the need for you to send it information in order to collect data and shoot out results for you. Again, I chose these basic everyday examples that's relevant to you in the hope that you better understand how IoT works. And I mean, there are a lot of better use cases than having vibrating forks and stoves <laughs> that can talk to you. The IoT technology is very prominent in the agriculture agricultural and farming industry, where farmers has the ability to now self-automate some of their duties through sensors, which essentially streamlines irrigation systems. This is made possible because these devices receives information about the weather from the internet connection. It can also detect when it's going to rain and decide not to water the crops because they will be watered by the rain anyways. Now, all of these things sounds very cute and cool and everything, which it is, but there's a huge massive massive issue here with these centralized IoT companies. They are prone to privacy and security vulnerabilities. Just imagine all of your everyday appliances becomes connected to the damn internet. That's a heck of a lot in of information rather that is readily available. It makes it harder to keep confidential information out of the hands of say hackers and unauthorized users and even the centralized company in itself who may sell your data to advertisers. I'm so sorry guys I actually hyped up this story just to break it all down. But we have a solution ladies and gentlemen and that's where the nodal network comes in we need the right network to connect to not just any and any network especially a centralized one we need a network that isn't going to steal our data and track our every step we need a network that consumes a low energy and in the perfect world it has to be decentralized well let me tell you something nodal checks all those boxes in an article I stumbled upon written by TechCrunch.com, CEO himself, Misha Benolil said, The nodal SDK could also work alongside advertising SDKs from carriers and OMs. One main difference though, we don't need to know anything about users. We are not interested in users' data and devices' IDs are also anonymized. Now that's the type of company I would love to support. Nodal's vision is to create the largest decentralized data hub which provides a connection that can process micro payments for the internet of things and over the years they have actually achieved exactly that if we look at this diagram it shows the other big players in the game for example helium only has 13,000 base stations opposed to nodal who has over 5 million and iota has a complex method to process data opposed to nodal which can start this process seamlessly within minutes the list continues with the likes of say apple samsung and all the way down to amazon sidewalk which requires specific and unique devices to connect. Opposed to Nodal, which enables any device that's compatible with Bluetooth low energy to join the network instantly, and we all got Bluetooth on our phones now, come on. Unlike most centralized IoT networks out there that only relies on 3G, 4G, or 5G, Nodal Distributed Network is a pure software solution that deployed the use of 
Bluetooth Low Energy, which they refer to in the short form as BLE, which is a wireless interface that can support any wireless protocol and is also far more efficient and effective. If you want to be a contributor to the crowdsource IoT network, you can monetize your connectivity and all contributors will be rewarded for participating within the network, which we will get into in about a minute. But one of the things I love the most about the nodal network is, unlike traditional and centralized networks who collects personal and identifiable information, the nodal SDK provides a privacy-centric alternative to monetize and does not collect PII or personal information from the network contributors or what they refer to as edge nodes. The nodal network does not collect phone numbers, names, contacts, pictures, or anything of this description from edge nodes or those connected to the network. However, for the purpose of asset tracking of IoT devices, the nodal network may temporarily collect the geolocation of the edge node or network contributor. Just like other blockchains, the nodal network has its own native cryptocurrency, which is used to pay for network fees. Very similar to how Bitcoin is paid for miners on the blockchain and how Ethereum is also paid to miners on the Ethereum network, the same is true for nodes. Nodal. nodal cash will be paid to edge nodes, as mentioned earlier, who are contributors of the network through a proof of connectivity algorithm by creating and providing network coverage for subscribers. It's important to note, ladies and gentlemen, 60% of the supply will be slowly released to these proof of connectivity contributors, which is how a true decentralized network should operate. Save the majority of the supply for those who pay an important role within the network and they will earn nodal cash, opposed to having that supply being circulated or just sold to whales. As we can see here on the pie chart, which displays the token distribution. Nodal cash can also be used for governance to weigh in votes to make decisions within the network and the ecosystem. This governance system is structured in three chambers. The first is the root committee, who chooses the, the members of every committee. The second is the technical committee, who is responsible for pushing upgrades and performing simple fixes. Fixes. Lastly, the financial committee, who is in charge of the company fund and chooses how to allocate them. It's worth noting with Nodal, you actually have the ability to do things like monetize your existing cellular infrastructure through Nodal's IoT network, which is pretty neat. And I gotta say, I can't cover that in this video. However, I will most certainly cover that in my next Nodal video in the very near future. So you're probably wondering who are the people behind Nodal? Well, they have a very fairly large team, but at the helm is co-founder Garrett Kinsman and CEO Misha Benolai, who in 2004 built the first telco to enable communications for Skype. You can find quite a number of videos on YouTube. There's one in particular where he was a guest speaker on TechCrunch. I highly recommend you guys take some time and check that out. As mentioned at the top of this video, the nodal network is already integrated within the Polkadot network. If you download the Polkadot extension wallet, head on over to the UI, click the drop down menu and change the network to nodal network and there you go. It will then populate. Many projects are piggybacking off of the word Polkadot, misleading the crypto community for marketing purposes, but not nodal. These guys mean business and this is a project that deserves your attention. So check out their telegram and website, I'll leave the links to that in the description box and also in the comment section below. I most certainly will be doing my part by covering them and paying very close attention to their developments in the weeks and in the months to come. And do be on the lookout for my second nodal video as we will be covering how to monetize your existing cellular infrastructure. I hope you learned something from this video, I hope it gave you some value and I also hope you got a much better understanding on how IoT technology works and what the nodal network is all about. So you know what? There really isn't much left to say other than, until the next video, you're on your own man. Later.